Concentrators are often used uh, in the field of uh, solar energy conversion. Uh, for example, shown here is this uh, parabolic dish and uh, it's used in this uh, concentrated uh, photovoltaic uh, system which is uh, mounted uh, at the focal point uh, over here and uh, this disc concentrates the light uh, coming from the sun into this uh, onto this uh, focal point uh, another such example is of this uh, solar thermal system or uh, what is uh, many time called as a csp system and uh, you can see that uh, you have these multitude of these uh, mirrors located uh, on the ground and they are concentrating the sunlight towards the focal point over here at which I have a solar tower uh, which uh, uh, which takes the sunlight and uh, uses it to heat up a liquid which then uh, converts or runs a turbine. So a very important matrix for all these uh, concentrated system, either this uh, concentrated photovoltaic system or this uh, CSP system over here. Uh, matrix which is uh, very important is this uh, directly normal incident uh, light or uh, directly normal irradiance which is many times abbreviated as uh, DNI. So let me explain uh, what this DNI stands for. So suppose you have uh, on a sunny day or on a cloudy day, rather a cloudy day, you have a scenario like this where you have uh, your sunlight and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, incident on the, on, the, on the atmosphere of the earth. So there will be some absorption of the sunlight by the aerosol or the water vapor uh, present and all the other gases, for example, even carbon dioxide uh, present in this atmosphere. And then let's say there's some amount of uh, cloud coverage. So this, uh, these uh, light will interact with this cloud and uh, it will essentially get diffused uh, due to scattering with these uh, water vapor or other molecules uh, present uh, in this cloud. And uh, that is called as a diffusive uh, component of uh, light. And also, you know, I'm, I'm uh, mounting my panel on the ground over here. And uh, this ground itself might have a finite uh, reflectivity and it can reflect uh, this light which is uh, incident on it uh, on other parts of this ground and uh, you know it can get reflected from there and then get uh, incident on the solar panel and that's called as the albedo or uh, this component of light is called as albedo and uh, uh, some scenarios where this albedo can become uh, significant is for example this panel is located uh, uh, in uh, in the midst of snow so there's a snow surrounding this uh, panel and uh, it can uh, reflect this uh, light onto this panel or for example you're mounting this panel on a white roof such that uh, so you have uh, many installations which are done on say Walmart on top of uh, rooftops of uh, uh, these uh, commercial buildings they are mounted on uh, this roof which is painted white uh, many times to minimize the heating which occurs inside the building because this white surface will uh, reflect a large part of the light but uh, it can be also used advantageously to uh, increase the incident radiation on this panel so on a on you know on a typical day if you start with 100% uh, of uh, of light uh, uh, hitting the atmosphere you can see that uh, you know around 80% of that get uh, absorbed uh, into the atmosphere you know by the time it uh, reaches uh, the surface of the earth there's ozone which absorbs it there are air molecules there's water vapor so all of these things they absorb uh, light and 18% of that is uh, absorbed uh, by this uh, atmosphere. And then 7% of it, or approximately you know, between 7 to 10% of it, it gets scattered by these uh, different uh, components. Again, water vapor, uh, ozone, dust particles, uh, carbon dioxide particles. So between 7 to 10% of that, it gets scattered and it uh, forms this uh, diffusive uh, component. And then 70% of that is uh, what uh, comes directly and uh, hits your uh, panel directly. So this uh, DNI or this uh, direct uh, normal uh, uh, irradiation, it basically measures the amount of sunlight which is uh, facing or which is at an angle which is 90 degree or it's uh, normal 
uh, to the direction uh, of the sun. So this panel, if uh, assume that it uh, it tracks and you know you rotate this panel and it tracks uh, very closely the uh, direction of the sun from sunrise to sunset and it's always at an angle of 90 degree or it's always at normal incidence uh, with respect to the sun then the amount of irradiation which will be hitting this panel is basically what is uh, what come counts towards my dni so many times you might have also noticed then when people uh, refer to the spectrum they refer to this am 1.5 but there's a letter at the end of it standing AM 1.5 G or AM 1.5 D where this 1.5 it uh, stands for the air mass this D over here means that uh, the spectrum is represented of only the direct sunlight and uh, when it says G at the end it means that both the direct and diffusive components are uh, taken into account so this uh, global spectrum has approximately 10% more intensity as uh, compared to this uh, direct spectrum. So why is this DNI so important uh, for uh, concentrating uh, systems, systems such as uh, CPV or uh, CSP systems? The reason is that when you concentrate the sunlight, when you place uh, a parabolic dish or you place uh, a Fresnel lens and you try to concentrate the sunlight, these are only this direct component is what uh, you can concentrate to. This part which is uh, diffusive and uh, coming due to diffusion from particles or from clouds and the albedo component are things which you cannot concentrate because these uh, these uh, diffusive components they don't have any particular directionality uh, uh, associated with them so you cannot concentrate this diffusive and albedo components what you can concentrate is this uh, direct uh, component so that is why this dni matrix is uh, often used to essentially uh, calculate the feasibility of uh, these uh, concentrated uh, systems and it's a uh, measured uh, you know it's measured uh, uh, with uh, quite some effort by organizations such as uh, nrel or nasa which uh, measure uh, which calculate it uh, from uh, different ways sometimes people uh, place uh, you know local observation stations they place those observation state stations throughout the states and measure this uh, directly uh, normal incident uh, light sometimes you uh, you know you take some models you calculate the cloud cover at these different uh, places and uh, uh, model what would be the dni but nonetheless so shown here are the dni map of uh, of continental uh, united states and uh, you can see that uh, places such as uh, arizona or uh, places uh, such as uh, uh, some parts of Texas, New Mexico, they have a very direct, uh, very large component of uh, this uh, DNI. You know, one thing that uh, people expect is that this DNI would be just related to the latitude of the place. So, for example, you can see in this map that, uh, you know, places, uh, these places in Texas and these places in Florida would have the same uh, latitude. But you see that they have very different uh, DNI. The reason is that they have very different climate and they have very different uh, uh, atmospheric uh, composition. For example, in Florida, there might be, you know, a lot more uh, cloud cover throughout uh, the year. And that reduces your annual DNI for uh, that particular place. So even though these two places, they are located at the same latitude, they might have very different uh, DNI numbers. And you can see that uh, that trend holding uh, when you look at the DNI map of the world. So this plots the DNI map of the world. The brighter places over here represent a high DNI. So the brighter places over here, they represent a high DNI. And the darker means uh, less DNI. So you can say these. So you can see that these places uh, in uh, U.S. and Mexico they are at the same latitude as uh, these places in India, and uh, these places in China. But these places in China they have a much lower uh, DNI because uh, just because uh, there's more humidity, there are more clouds, also there might be more pollution. So you see that all those things play a role when you calculate this uh, DNI. And the fact that uh, this uh, DNI is only, uh, you know, uh, a fraction of your total available sunlight. So this uh, directly normal uh, irradiance, uh, it does not take into account the diffusive component or the albedo component. That means when you concentrate, uh, when you design these uh, concentration systems, 
you have to be uh, very efficient because uh, you're throwing away the diffusive component and the albedo components which uh, don't get uh, concentrated so it's only this dni component which uh, gets uh, concentrated so these uh, systems have to be even more efficient so that uh, they can uh, leverage these uh, dni numbers